today's purpose of the video is that I'm gonna show you a lot of Roy gameplay. He's actually one of my best characters, and I really enjoy playing with him, so I have a lot of insight into him. So I kind of want to just guide you through my thought process, what I'm going for, the way I think about the character, and just this is all pretty much aimed just to help you do better with Roy so you can learn about him and how to play him really well. Um, sorry, so we're going into Roy versus Mario in Battlefield. Now, Roy, obviously, he's a swordsman. This means that Roy, in general, is harder to beat when it comes to attack versus attack. Like, for example, if Mario swings one of his arrows at me, I'm going to win, mainly because I have a sword and he doesn't. Um, this is because swords have what we call a disjointed hitbox. It means that Roy's attack is not connected to his body. So, obviously, that makes sense, right? But basically, in terms of fighting games, what it means is that if you attack the sword, you can't really attack Roy. This basically creates a massive advantage, as it would in real life, too. <laughs> it actually is a very, very real <laughs> life advantage. So Roy, in general, is actually pretty hard to deal with, unless you have a sword yourself. Now, Roy's basic mechanic is that he has um, a sweet spot and a sour spot in his move. Sweet spot basically means that it's the part of his attack that does the most damage, and sour spot is the part that does the least. Now, the sour spot is at the tipper of his attacks. This is because uh, Roy is intended to be a close quarter swordsman. Uh, and the hilt, or towards the base of his attack, like pretty much as close as possible, is the, the sweet spot, which is when he does the most amount of damage. This means that every time you swing with Roy, you don't really want to swing as far away as possible because otherwise his attacks will be really weak. This means that with Roy, you want to be approaching at all times if you want to attack. Obviously, if you're winning, you don't have to, but... Um, every time you're moving it around your attack, you have to make sure to go from medium range to close range. Don't go from like long range to medium. That's how you always get the sour spot. Just go from medium to close. What I mean with that is that if you're approaching and you're at medium distance, make sure to push forward as you're doing so instead of retreating. This is actually a weakness for Roy because this means that every time Roy approaches or does space and he always has to approach otherwise the attacks are going to be weaker this can make him slightly more predictable in certain situations but the cool thing is that in ultimate they made everybody's aerials and pretty much just everything that has less lag this means that roy is by nature very safe and a lot of his aerials have almost no lag at all like as you can see i'm kind of just throwing aerials a lot of the time i'm like using neutral right there up there back here like even though i missed my upper and i landed with it i was still able to punish mario with a force smash this means that a lot of the time you can just swing. For example, there I crossed them up with Neutraler. Uh, Neutraler is actually going to be one of your main tools to approach and do damage with and do combos. This is because not only is Neutraler pretty much safe on blocks, especially if you land behind them with Neutraler, because this is what we call a cross up. Uh, cross up is when you basically try to land behind them with pressure, or you try to, like, let's say you do any attack that lands behind them and then they have to turn around to attack you, is what we call a cross up. And also there's an edge guard right Roy is actually able to edge guard as well. Um, if you can read the air dodge. So like I knew after I hit the first border, I just pressure him. I knew after I hit the first border uh, that he had to air dodge. Otherwise he was going to die. So I just reacted to it and hit him. Although um, since it was a directional air dodge, he lags more than if it's a neutral air dodge. So neutral as in no direction. So he still died anyway. But yeah, so like I was saying earlier, uh, neutral is going to be your main tool to approach. And it's going to be your main combo tool. This is because neutral elite, um, not only into itself, so you can do neutral into neutral, but it also just, <laughs> it just works really well in general. It just does way too much damage. Um, so it's, it's pretty hard for players to deal with it. Um, and if you fight a heavy character or a, or a character that's a big model, when I mean big model, I mean tall characters, right? Like think like anything as tall as Roy or taller than Roy uh, is what I would consider like a tall character and they generally just tend to get destroyed by neutral it just it just combos repeatedly like that's not rare for you to do strings or, or combos rather where you land a neutraler 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 forwarder forwarder and you do like 50 damage it's not rare it's, it's actually very common um regardless um Roy's combo tree is going to be mainly focused on using neutraler into itself and depending if they're too far or if they're lifted too much in the air, um, you go for forwarder as well. And they use pretty much just drag them off the level. If they air dodge through your combo, which they might at some point. Um, then at that point, you just... Because here's the thing, air dodging is so laggy that even if they do air dodge, you can swing anyway. 
and then swing again for the lack of the air dodge and kill them. So they don't actually want to air dodge. In a lot of situations, they honestly just want to take order, which is good for us. We, we do want the extra damage. Um, Roy does a lot of damage as well. He's very damaging when he's moved. So it's not hard to get the opponent to kill percent. And Roy also hits really hard, so he also kills early as well. For example, like up till fourth kill, Force smash, down smash. Uh, force smash is the strongest by far. I will say his strongest moves to kill are force smash and back here. Uh, fourth was really good too. Those are like the main tools that are going to kill really early. Side B, um, if you do the forward variation, because you guys have to remember that side B, you can do variations as you're doing the side B. You can do like side B, up, 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 side, side B, down, 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 or, or forward. Um, the forward finisher, uh, if you just do side B the whole time, just press into the side. It actually, like, if I did side B on Sheik at 90% um, towards the edge, it will kill her. And there's nothing she can do. <laughs> you can't come, you can't, you can't escape that uh, side B at all. So it's actually a really powerful tool. Uh, Roy's side B kills really early. He, I will say he probably has one of the best, if not the best, dance and blade out of any character. I think it's actually called different for Roy, uh, but I can't remember the name. I don't think it's actually dance and blade. I think it's something else, but it doesn't matter. Um, as you can see, Roy, um, Roy's a lot better in this game than he was in Smash uh, 4. Like, Sheik was a character that was almost impossible for Roy to beat. She was way too fast and did too much damage with her combos, and Roy couldn't really keep up because she, he just wasn't fast enough and damaging enough to keep up with her. But in this game, you can easily not just keep up with Sheik, but you're just faster than her in a lot of ways. Um, a lot of your attacks do more damage, more range, and are just almost just as fast as her. So... You can actually just keep up just fine, which is really good for Roy mains because for the longest of times, Roy just wasn't a good character. And, and Smash 4, I thought he was really good. He ended up not being that good. Um, I thought that his attacks were safer than they really were. Um, and as soon as people figured that out, it, he just kind of felt like a rock. And then um, in Melee, he's just, <laughs> well, low tier slash maybe mid tier best. So like, you know, he's never really been that good in a Smash game. But now hey, Ultimate is really helping him with this engine. Uh, no air dodging, dashing mechanics, everyone has less lag. Roy actually feels like, um, I would say, potentially one of the best sportsmen in the game, even the best one. Uh, and I say this because his movement just flows really well in this game. Um, he can combo out of anything. There's so many different tools that he can use to combo. He can use jab, he can use um, neutral air, he has throw combos. He, uh, he can tech chase for kills as well. And all his attacks just feel really rewarded to hit. So um, this is definitely the best version we've had of Roy so far in a Smash game. Um, I mean, just look at him keeping up with Diddy Kong. Diddy Kong is a character that <laughs> Roy had no business, <laughs> no business with the Smash 4 at all. <laughs> this character <laughs> did not keep up with Diddy at all. <laughs> but uh, it's, in, this, in this game, this matchup feels like it could even be in Roy's favor. Um, so that's amazing. Now, in terms of uh, doing the combo tree, here I'm doing more jab than usual. This is because jab actually combos into um, a lot of your moves. At zero, you can do jab into grab. You can do jab into side B a little bit after zero. You can do jab into neutral or forward air at mid percent. Um, you can do jab into up B at some percent as well. Um, like, pretty much, if you land jab, you connect the world. Uh, you can just connect all of Diddy's moves. Uh, you can just connect all of it into Diddy is what I'm trying to say. And Diddy is a short character, which means that you can land it on most characters. I will say that combos are harder depending on how small characters are. Like on Diddy, it's a little bit harder to combo than let's say Sheik, right? Or Captain Falcon. But then a character like Pichu, who's ti actually tiny, um, it it's, hard to, it's harder to combo for sure. So size does matter. <laughs> Especially in this game, the size definitely matters. Uh, it affects uh, every aspect of the game quite heavily. Now, Roy is actually really strong at the ledge. If he puts people at the ledge, um, your fourth kill actually catches uh, people jumping and getting up from the ledge. Your fourth smash is really easy. I would say it's pretty easy to land. It has a big hitbox, definitely easier to land than a Smash 4. And it, since you can do it out of running, you can bait people into it. So you'll see me do a lot of, uh, of like moving around and then just for smashing when I bait people in um, to come through. It actually works really well, honestly. Um, as you can see, Fortil is a kill option, so as soon as he rolled in, uh, you can just kill him. Um, I use Fortil to cover jumps and jab as well, and I use Neutraler because um, Neutraler is almost lagless, so you kind of just throw it around at the ledge, and if people get up at any point in time they get hit, 
and it compels people to either get up attack or roll if they get up attack um which is they just swing from the ledge you want to just block it and then you can just uh drop shield uh fourth kill i think you can down smash even um i don't think you can force smash only their get up attack is significantly worse than other characters um if they roll you can actually force smash that if you react immediately up on the roll um you can fourth kill even if you react late and you can up b even if you're really late on it like you can you can you can see them rolling for a while and then you can up b you have a big window to do up b and the cool thing about roy is that he's up b does a lot of damage it does like 20 something damage i forget the number but it's like 20 something damage and that's really really significant especially because damage adds up like um, if you do 20 damage for a B, you land, let's say, two of these. Because you can do it out of shield as well. You can just be blocking something. And then you can just up the out of shield. And it's actually really fast. And you can punish something really easily. So it works really well. Now, uh, I will say characters that could potentially give Roy trouble. I will say are characters that have significant more range than him. So I will say characters, for example, like Cloud felt annoying to fight. Mainly because Cloud has more range than Roy. Uh, but Roy has more damaging combos and has an easier approach. You can kind of just break through. Like, it's not any... It's just annoying. I would say it's not like a bad matchup. I would just say it was annoying because I have to be a little bit more careful in my approaches. I would say Marth could be annoying. Lucina could be annoying because they have a lot of range. But other than that, I would say those are like the main characters you should be concerned in terms of range. I feel like Roy just honestly does pretty good against almost everybody in the cast. I would say another character that was annoying was probably Pikachu. I mean, uh, I've been saying Pikachu is probably the best character in the game. He's really, really, really overpowered um, right now. Is is what most of the top players in the scene are saying, and it just seems that way. So when you play against him at like top level play, it's like so, like it's actually really annoying. Um, regardless, um, I think that um, Pikachu just does well against Roy. Mainly because Pikachu is so short that a lot of Roy's combos just don't really, um, just are really hard to work on because Pikachu is so small. And then Pikachu can um, edge guard Roy really well, so he can just jump off the level and kill you, and it's really hard to deal with. And then because Roy is a fast puller, a lot of Pikachu's combos work better. Um, oh yeah, in case you guys don't know what fast uh, faller means, it's a uh, Basically what it does, is, basically what it means is that um, your character falls faster to the ground. And that's basically it. <laughs> but falling faster to the ground, is actually a big deal in Smash. Uh, we have two types of characters, right? We have floaties and we have fast fallers. Floaties, it means that they take a while to land on the ground from the air. And fast fallers is that they land faster on the ground. What this means is that this affects the combos and how you survive the move. For example, I'll give you the rundown. A fast faller tends to land faster on the ground which means that they can apply aerials faster and are better usually at pressuring because they can just jump um, and land immediately for mix-ups, for aerials, for attacks to have better aggression attributes, right? Thanks to the fastball. However, uh, fastball characters tend to get combo harder because they tend to go less far during combos, which means that they're easier to combo. Um, the other advantage is that fastballers tend to die vertically uh, tend to live vertically longer, which means that if you get hit by like Snake's up still, uh, Mario's up smash, or just most up smashes in the game, uh, actually just anything that just may potentially kill you vertically. Oh, so you see Roy's upper? You see how Roy will never be able to combo like that? But yeah, you can just upper juggle people like that. Roy is Roy's sick. Um, regardless, fast bowlers, um, they die vertically, they just survive vertically longer. Uh, floaties, they tend to dive easier vertically but they um they survive easier sideways mainly because a lot of them it's, it's it's just it's just mainly because of like the the way the way the way the game calculates speed and all that um generally floaties tend to have an easier time surviving sideways um than fast followers for sure because like if you're falling fast the ground is also uh, harder to recover and whatnot so as you can see fast fall and a floaty Changes quite a bit of things. Floaties are harder to combo. This is why it's easier to combo Roy than combo in Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff too floating, for example. But there's also weight. Characters have weight attached to them. Um, Roy is an average weight. I think his weight weight value is 95. Just to give you an idea, like I think 100 or 
I think between 95 and 100 is like average weight, like nothing special. Um, I think Sheik is like 89 or like something like that. And Sheik is lightweight, for example. So like weight does matter because it controls how, um, <laughs> obviously how early you die <laughs> or how late if you're heavy. For example, Snake is a little bit of a heavyweight. And weight actually matters a lot as well. We having the ability to not die immediately is really nice. Also, Roy actually caught that. As you can see, Roy can actually get out there um, off the level really quickly. He can just jump over there and just, just hit you. And that's not something he could do before. Like, that was really far. And he still got there and still killed him. So that's really good. I feel like Roy will do good against any kind of character that honestly does not have good out of shield options. Like, if you don't have quick backwards out of shield options, you're going to get eaten alive by neutral because Roy can just land behind you and pressure you for free. Really, you can just land behind and just pressure for free. Um, and if you have Roy pressuring you for free, you're going to lose. You're going to get hit a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. So Roy was a character that did bad against Fox and, and Smash for the Wii U. Uh, Fox had way too many combos and he just had a really easy time beating uh, Roy's neutral because Roy wasn't fast enough. But in this game... Um, this feels completely different. Completely different. Uh, all thanks to Roy just feeling massively buffed. Um, another cool thing about um, Roy's AB is that it actually does have armor, which means that you can actually do it out of shield. And if you AB and your opponent somehow swings, you actually just power through it and hit him anyway. And I think that's really sick because it actually gives you a big window to punish. Uh, right there, I forgot that uh, Fox's new side B does not actually, because of the game mechanics, can't cross people up from the ground or from side b for some reason um yeah i forgot that Ro uh fox's side b will actually stop in front of my shield so i force smash behind me because that's habit like that's usually how it works in every game fox's side fox side b's he always ends up behind you but in this game i forgot that's not the case <laughs> so it threw me off really hard um one thing to note though is that roy's a beat while it kills it kills really late and i would not really consider it a good kill option because he, they can be at 150, they get a B, and it doesn't actually kill. But what it does is damage. And that's, that's it's damage, and it's fast, and it's out of shield. So I think it's really good, actually. If it killed, though, it, that move will be broke. Uh, will be, like, broken. Will be a P, for sure. Also, the way I got to kill this match is that, uh, on the first stock, is that I down throw, then I tech chase. Tech chasing is when you knock someone into the ground, and then you read or follow their um, ground movement, you want to say, like, when they land. Uh, depending on where they take, if they take in place, tech roll away, uh, or they don't take at all. If you down tilt, you put them into the state where you can basically have an advantage where if you read it correctly, you will get a free hit. And I down smash because it covers three options. Uh, if they don't tech, they die to down smash. If they tech in place, they die to down smash. And if they roll behind me, they die to the second hit of down smash, which hits behind me. As you can see, I picked down smash because it covers three out of four options, which means that instead of me guessing 50 50 or one out of four because they generally have four options you can tech in tech out or tech away tech in place or no tech so four options um so like by me doing down smash i cover three options out of four which gives me a much higher success rate like it gives me 75 percent of um of getting that right so for example there he did down air and i just up b through to punish him instead of blocking i just up b because i know it's gonna win like up b actually works really well as a as an anti-aerial so it's to be noted that it's, it's a really good tool that way. Also, side B almost killed him there. You can also use up B off the level as well, like against the ledge like that to enter step recoveries. It's really good too. At kill percent, you can also do jab and you can forwarder. You can back if they DI poorly or if you just do it really fast. It puts them in a bad spot if you back here. You can even upper as well, but upper takes a little bit to kill. See, Roy's uh, upper is really good at juggling, but it does not um, it does not kill that well. So, it's good for combos, not for kills. His back here, though, that move actually just kills you. So does up kill. As you can see, Roy is just... He's slick, dude. He's such a... He's just, he's just so nimble and fast. Like, he's just really able to get in there in almost every situation. Like, I can keep the pressure going the whole game. And he's actually really hard to deal with. So I don't think it's too far-fetched to say he's the best person. Because I tried all, all, all of the sword characters in this game, and he's definitely up there uh, for one of the best. He he actually feels better than Marth, who was perceived to be the best swordsman. Mainly because Marth is 
actually slower than Roy. And a lot of characters that tend to have swords, they really need speed. Because the main weakness of swords in Smash historically is that they tend to have very big windows of cooldown. Which means you can punish them easy. Like you just bait the ranged attack and then you sweep in for a quick punish. But Roy is way too fast and he's not laggy at all. So he actually just doesn't care. Like it, there's no such thing as like b punishing Roy's like cooldowns because they're instant. Um, like unless you're doing something really wrong, you're not really going to get punished a lot of the time with Roy. Which is the science of a good character, I'll tell you that much. One thing I will mention though is that I find slants to be annoying with Roy. I find, I don't know why, but slants make it harder for me to approach. I think it might be because the way slants work in Smash is that they affect spacing a little bit and the way attacks work. Because you're either uphill or you have a high ground. <laughs> and I feel like Roy has to jump like if there is like i feel like if you're from above going down i feel like it's hard to land your sweet spot and if you're from the bottom going high um it's 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 annoying to cross people up so you usually end up in front of the shield so i feel like that's why i don't like slants because it's hard to cross up and it's hard to land sweet spots it's a little bit harder so i'm actually not a fan of slants at all and as I was playing this match, in the back of my head, I was thinking, hmm, Slants feel a little bit harder to space. I also think that if you land from a platform, you should make sure to do your aerial as low as possible so you can land with it and it's safe from blocks. This is because if you do aerials too high, you give your opponent much more time to punish because you're lagging into the ground. Whereas if you immediately land upon hidden, um, you have to suffer basically you make sure that they lag as you're recovering. Whereas if you hit them from too high up and then you land, you give them more time to recover. Also, Roy's force smash seems to sweet spot a little bit higher up than you would think. Right there, you could jump, but he still got hit anyway. So like that force smash is actually much more reliable than it looks like. Also, Mewtwo has a lot of range. Jeez. See that tail? Just the way he can just pressure platforms. This is why counter comes in handy because Roy does have a counter. And his counter is actually pretty good. Uh, especially just the way... Oh, oh, ear dodge. Oh, you're dead. See, if I backer him there, he's dead too. So I just killed him from two hits at 50. Roy's really powerful. Um, but yeah, like I was saying... Um, range in general is just... It's a, it's a big deal in this game. It's a big deal. And while you have range, um, the, here, here's, here's, the, here's the cool thing about range is that if you have range, you can force people to air dodge a lot more because they have to air dodge from a higher point, which makes their air dodge more predictable. So Mewtwo, uh, while he has a lot of range, right? I present him with a more, one more option because I have counter. And counter gives you the option to land without air dodge. So I can land into him and instead of swinging, I bait his attack with range, making my counter easier to land. Um, and I think that's important because in this game, you don't have that many tools to land. I feel like every character gets kind of wrecked when they try to land. Um, like if I tried to air dodge when he was trying to up tilt me, I would have gotten, <laughs> I would have gotten hit probably with up smash and maybe I would have lost the game. Uh, but the fact that I had counter was saved me in a pinch. Now that's a big deal. So yeah, anytime someone's above you like this, you want to shark them with Roy Upper. You want to Omega shark them. This is because Roy's Upper just has no lag. And you can just Upper, and if you miss, you can just quickly move to where you think they're going to be, giving you an easy kill. I will say Roy's worst aerial is his downer. I find his downer to be still pretty hard to land. I will say it's a little bit easier to land than a Smash 4, because Smash 4 it was a pitiful move. But in this game, there's many times where I've had a free spike and I still miss with downer. I'm not sure if I'm not good with the move or if it's still hard to land. It's probably hard to land. Um, I haven't really easy time spiking with other spikes. For example, I find Ike's uh, downer much easier to land. I find Falcon's downer much easier to land. Falco's, you know, the list goes on. Uh, I feel like the way, because Roy has the sweet spot with the downer to kill you. I think that's the problem. Whereas everyone else can kind of just downer you <laughs> and you die. So that's probably one big weakness is that you don't really get spikes for free. 
Oh yeah, this the spaghetti at the water. So when you land into the water, you actually uh, lag for a little bit. And um, I, the reason I'm playing, because you might notice that I'm playing on a bunch of different stages. Like I'm not really playing on the same stage against the same character every time. It's because I want to show you how Roy can feel in a bunch of different stages. Oh my god, dude! I forgot that I even happened to this bitch. Um, oh yeah, Delfino, Delfino Plaza is really weird. I think that's in 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 Brawl and Smash Four. If you you could land like five seconds before that and you will not die in this game though i literally went through the level i went through the level and i died and i don't understand why um i mean i basically touched the ground like i waited until a very low point the stage was there and i landed and i just immediately died whereas in every other game that the stage is present you can land like even five seconds before that and you don't die so the stage might be programmed wrong now that i think about it <laughs> but yeah the reason i'm trying to go like i'm going a different color different stage different character because i really want to show you guys um it's kind of like a good showcase of roy so you guys can have a really good idea of how the character looks um plays against different characters in different stages i feel like it's more variety variety is fun so hopefully you guys are into that but yeah um roy's counter did not actually kill him there but um because he's so close to the ledge and the blast one is not that far um it's pretty close pretty much next to us um, even if he couldn't make it back, he was even if he didn't die, he was not gonna be able to make it back. So he just kind of just died off because it's like, well, <laughs> GG. Hawk is a really combo heavy character, so you get combo by him really hard. You get combo by Roy really, really, really hard. He's he's quite he's quite the difficult character to deal with, especially for Roy because he's a fast bowler. As we already know, he gets combo harder. See, uh, at this point, I'm just kind of dashing around, using neutral. Like, that's pretty much going to be, I want to say, like, half of your neutral, dash around, uh, neutral. You can mix it up with, like, dash around down tilt for a tech phase, dash around jab, which combos into stuff, dash around fourth tilt, which has a good amount of range as well. Um, if you catch them off guard, you can do, like, dash around fourth smash or down smash or up smash even. But yeah, out of down throw, you can combo neutral if you're quick enough. And out of jab at zero, you can land a grab, which turns into down throw into neutral. Um, so jab really connects the whole world. Opens up all the options for you. Also, while Roy's a B is hard to edge guard, as you can see, I haven't really gotten an edge guard that much during this video. Because Roy's actually pretty hard to edge guard. That up B beats a bunch of things. But it's not impossible to beat it. A, a, a best scenario, what a lot of good players do against Roy, is that they swing in a way where they trade with it, and then you die because it doesn't go that far. It's like a decent recovery. It's not like amazing. The only reason it's good is because it's hard to beat, um, giving you a false, <laughs> a false impression that it's better than it really is. But um, yeah, so like my recommendation to make sure that you recover more often is that you don't want to waste your double jump you want to make sure to keep your double jump for example right there remember how i was saying that i find the spike to be hard to land for example there i had a free spike and it seemed like i landed it but well guess what i had to be closer to him but downer also has like the startup which makes it really hard to um control because you expect it to come out sooner but then it comes out really late if it came out sooner it will be easier to land but it's it kind of has like a I want to say it's like the biggest window of any of his aerials to land. So it's pretty uncomfortable range. Dash attack is also a kill option. It's pretty decent too. It's just that if I'm going to dash attack, I'm probably going to fort it because it feels safer. And yeah, backers, as you can see a moment ago, it's really strong. <laughs> It's really easy to just kill someone cross screen, which is backer dead. It, it just happens. It happens a lot. In terms of um, in terms of Roy advanced techniques, I haven't really seen any super advanced techniques that will really up your gameplay. But I was I will consider Roy to be one of the more fundamental characters because you kind of just need basic understanding of the game, but 
at a high level, if that makes sense. Like, basically being high level at the basics. And if you're good at the basics, then you can really make Roy shine. Because he's just, he basically just rewards being good at the game in general. Like, like if you're really good at the game in general, you're bound to have a good Roy. It's just the way these characters work is that they're really simple to understand. And they just make sense. The, they just make more and more sense the more you understand how to abuse simple concepts of the game. Like when to shield, when to approach, when to grab, when to mix up. Um, that might ring true for every character, but there's characters that are really only good if you have specific knowledge about them. For example, Peach is a very specific character. She's not fundamentals at all. Um, she's a very, very, very like, you have to understand very specific things about her gameplay to play her really well. She's a, she has a bunch of advanced techniques and things that you have to understand. Shulk, very complicated character as well. You have to like, you have to be specifically good at playing Shulk um, gimmicks and Shulk uh, unique stuff to make him really good. Whereas Roy, you know, he's, he's a simple source, man. So he tends to play much more simple, obviously. Now, I wanted to get a match going against Lucina because Lucina has more range than Roy. So here you can see how Roy interacts with a character that has more range than him, but also has a sword, which means that Roy goes from outranging people to getting outrange, which changes the whole dynamic of the matchup. Uh, I will say Roy's main advantage in this matchup is that he has a bigger um, combo potential than Lucina. He can just get in there and do more damage. He does more damage than Lucina for encounters, for winning neutral. So Roy needs to win neutral less to get to kill Lucina. And that's good because Lucina has to win neutral more often than Roy. This means that it's okay for you to lose a little bit more neutral against Lucina because you will keep up with her really well. Simply because you combo harder, so you'd land more hits off of one hit. And then you also do more damage per hit. So this makes it so the matchup is more bearable. At the same time, Roy also has an easier time at killing. It's because more of his moves just kill. His fourth goes stronger. Down smash, uh, four smash, backer. I mean, Lucina's backer is really strong, but Roy's is ridiculously strong. So, all of those things will make it so you have an easier time pretty much securing stocks as well. But Lucina is just a lot safer, which means that you will lose neutral more often. So, if you're playing a, a person that's um, better than you, it's going to be feel really painful because you're not going to know how to win neutral at all. So, it's going to feel really pronounced. And also Lucina can edge card you, which is probably her biggest thing is that she can actually go off the level and challenge your B with forward or back air. And if you get hit by them at really early percents, like you can get hit by a forward at 30 and you will die. So, <laughs> so you want to be very, very careful. It's really, really easy to die against Lucina. She's definitely really good. Also, one thing I don't like about Roy is that he's counter. You can't really use it off the level. If you counter even around ledge level off the level, ledge level, just where around the ledge is, you actually just die. You can't make it back even with a double jump. I think it's really dumb. I feel counter should have um, a quicker window to act out of or something like that because it feels really discouraging to counter off the level, get a good counter going, and then you just die every time. It's really annoying. So I actually think, think, think that you don't want to counter off the level at all because you will, like, for example, if I counter there, I likely die just from using the counter. <laughs> like, all he needs to do is just not do anything. Just let me counter and then I will die. It's actually really frustrating. But I guess they I guess the only way to use counter so far is that you use, use it to land. So look at Roy's combat potential. I can just get one hit going. And then that Lucina was scared. I have to be high here because if I land without being normal, um, I would have died there. Like if I just kept going normal direction because he was trying to cover that. So I have to go high. Because even if I get hit high, if I land on the platform, I regain my double jump. Making it easier for me to recover. But to be careful off the level. He tried to trump me. Which means he tries to grab the ledge and force me off of it. To land a back here. Um, yeah, that option you can... If you will get the ledge taken from someone, you can actually just buffer an option to get out of it. Which means just mash, roll, mash, jump, mash something from the ledge. And it will actually, it will actually do it. Um, so you don't get ledge trump. Actually works really well. Saibi almost killed her. Saibi is really strong. Look at this one. Ooh, it was a pixel away from killing. And then he had to be there. Oh, that was a choke right there. That la that the pl that landing on platform was really good. Back there right here kills at 100. Yep, it does kill at 100. <laughs> As you can see, Roy just really good at sneaking those wins. Really good. Like Roy is more threatening. This is why he feels like he has an advantage. 
And guys, right before we're done with this video, make sure to enter my giveaway for two Nintendo Switch Ultimate Bundles. Enter the link in the description below. Follow me everywhere on my social media. And if you go to Twitch, you can use your Twitch Prime for a free subscription to gain extra entries for free. Or if you're already a subscriber, you just get them. Best of luck winning the giveaway, my boys. It ends December 20th. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you had a good time watching the video. Let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you guys around another video. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.